Esters are produced by esterification. It's a reaction that creates an ester. So it's a reaction of a carboxylic acid with an alcohol or a phenol, and it produces an ester. It's going to require a strong acid catalyst, and this is an example of a condensation reaction. So we have two compounds coming together. So here we have a carboxylic acid and an alcohol, and they're combining to form an ester, and um, a molecule of water gets kind of spit out as sort of an afterthought. So here's the carboxylic acid, and we're taking this, this hydrogen is getting replaced with an R group. I think it's, it's easiest to think of the hydrogen on the carboxylic acid being lost, and yet that's not actually how it comes out. They have determined experimentally that the carboxylic acid actually loses the whole OH group, the whole hydroxyl group here. The alcohol loses its hydrogen, and the oxygen from the alcohol is actually what bonds to this carbon. So this part from the alcohol becomes this portion of the ester. I am not going to go after you on that. I want you to be able to put an alcohol and a carboxylic acid together and, and form the correct ester. This, I mean, this is, um, it's good to be aware of what's true, but we don't really care for the purposes of this class. But this is an equilibrium reaction. That's the double-headed arrows here. So it's an equilibrium reaction. It favors the products a little bit, but it's pretty even. And so you can tweak it, you can shift it one way or another by, a f by changing the reaction conditions. So one way, if you're trying to produce esters, one thing you can do is by removing the product as you form it. In general chemistry, we learned about Le Chatelier's principle, which, you know, you've got um, an equilibrium, and if you, if you cause a change to the equilibrium, it will shift in a way to reduce the change. Okay, it's like, let's maintain status quo. So, if it's in its equilibrium, and an equilibrium reaction, remember, is going forwards and backwards at the same time. It's dynamic. It's just that it's going both directions at an equal rate once it reaches equilibrium. And so if we take away this ester as it's being formed, we reduce this concentration, then the forward reaction will be faster than the reverse reaction, and the equilibrium will shift to the right to make more of that product. So that's one way you can favor the product. Another is by putting in more acid. Because the acid here is, is a, um, I'm sorry, not the acid, the alcohol. The acid's a catalyst. I got started on that sentence and I realized that's not going the right direction. If we add more alcohol, if we increase this concentration, then the equilibrium will shift in a way to decrease that concentration. And it will, to do that, it will go to the product side. It's helpful to think of an ester in terms of two pieces coming together. So when we, you know, the esterification, we had an acid and an alcohol. And so it's helpful to think of this ester in terms of here's the acid part. This part is from the acid, and this part is from the alcohol. And so in this example here, Mom eats pickles. Okay, so this is propanoic acid. If we, wrote, if we react propanoic acid with propanol, we end up with this ester. So here are the three carbons from the alcohol, and here are the three carbons from the acid. So how do you remember which side is which? Well, this carbonyl carbon has to be from the acid because an alcohol doesn't have a carbonyl carbon. 
the acid has the carbonyl carbon. So this, this carbon and everything on its side is from the acid. And then here you've got this oxygen. All the carbons on the other side of that came from the alcohol. We can also have cyclic esters. So if we get a hydroxy acid, so here's an example of a hydroxy acid. Here's the carboxylic acid portion, and it's got a hydroxyl group down here. This can form um, an intramolecular esterification. So this is the alcohol part, and this is the acid part. And we lose the OH from the acid, and we lose the hydrogen from the alcohol. So here's that water molecule. So basically this guy's bending around, it's bending around, and then this water comes off, and this oxygen goes here to meet up with the carbon. This is similar to the formation of the, the cyclic hemiacetals. And so we end up with a cyclic ester. So this is a ring structure, and here's our carbonyl carbon. And then we've got, so we've got this carbonyl function group here, and then this reminds of us of an ether group. And this is a heterocyclic ring because we've got an oxygen in here. And these have a special name as a group. Cyclic esters are called lactones. So if you were going to ask like that on an exam, would you show like that part and then tell it, or ask for the product of esterification? Um, if I did put a question like this on an exam, I do occasion. I do like to put at least one or two questions that I consider to be challenging, um, because I think you know you shouldn't have. You definitely shouldn't have more than one hundred percent on an exam. You know you got to put some questions on there to challenge the A students, um, but then you shouldn't put so many on there that nobody else can can do well on the exam. I would consider that to be a challenging question. Really, what the reason that we're we're talking about this at all and looking at this is this is going to come back in the biochemistry and having seen that when we see sugars and other things doing this we'll go oh yeah that looks kind of familiar so some of this is kind of background information and I'm, I'm not going to test you on this either but this so a five membered ring is called a gamma lactone because this oxygen is attached to the gamma carbon of the carboxylic acid. So this was the nothing carbon and alpha, beta, gamma. So when you have five members in this ring, four of them are carbons, one's oxygen that's called a gamma lactone. And this one is called a delta lactone because the oxygen here is attached to the delta carbon. One, two, three. That's the fourth carbon over from this carbonyl carbon. And I'm not going to test you on this thing either. But it, it may show up, and I want you to at least have an idea of where, to, where did this delta lactone business come from.